What's going on guys? So the AI race is really starting to heat up. We have some of the biggest tech companies fighting for the spot to be the best AI coder. All right, we have AI coding IDEs, but more importantly, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about AI coding CLIs. And yes, we had open AI codex, we have COD code, but now Google Gemini is coming into the game and they got a new CLI, which we're going to be covering in today's video. I'm going to show you how you can actually set this up, how it may compare to some of the other AI coding CLIs. And what's even crazier than anything, guys, is Google open source this entire project and they are giving away basically like up to $600 of usage credits a day for free. So without ado, guys, let's dive right in. All right, guys, so all links I cover in today's video will be linked down below. And here we can see Gemini CLI, your open source AI agent. This is the blog post from them basically announcing this release. And here is the actual GitHub repo of the entire open source AI agent that brings the power of Gemini directly into your terminal. All right, so a few key things to note with Google Gemini CLI is it has a massive 1 million token context window and this is of course very very large uh, also too you get 60 model requests per minute and 1000 model requests per day with the open source free version which is a huge amount now if you need advanced use cases or increased limits you can use a specific model or require higher request capacity you would have to use your own API key from Google AI Studio. We're not going to be doing that though in today's video. We're just going to be using the free version. So you can query and edit large code bases. You can generate new apps. You can automate operational tasks. You can use MCP servers within this and you can ground your queries in Google search tool built into Gemini. So without ado, let's actually run this CLI right now. So few prerequisites you're going to need node.js version 18 or higher next what we're going to do is we're going to simply run this command right here so npx and then the github url right here all right so now we're going to install the following packages i'm going to say yes now as that is installing let me just quickly go over a few things with gemini cli Cloud code and open ai codex if you want to see a side-by-side -side comparison if you want to see a side-by-side -side comparison here it is so you can see google gemini i'm not going to read through this entire thing but if maybe if you want to pause this you can see native open source cross-platform free with limits of course it's open source has all these uh mcp extensions multimodal rate limits early stage reliability and it's using Gemini 2.5. Then we have Claude Code using Opus or Sonnet 4. And this is paid with either Pro or Max. So, so Pro is about 17 bucks a month. And then Max is 100 bucks a month per person. And if you're on Max, you get about 5 to 20 times more usage than Pro. If you are going to be using Claude Code a lot, it probably makes sense to be using Max because you're going to save a lot of money. Now, if you want me to do a side-by-side -side comparison between these CLIs, as well as there's some other CLIs that I'll mention too, um, then let me know in the comments down below. I have a few videos planned out where I am going to dive into these a little bit deeper and see which one is on top. Okay, so we have Gemini installed now in the CLI. So we can see the logo here, tips for getting started, ask questions, edit files, or run commands. Be specific for the best results and then create a gemini.md file to customize your interactions with gemini and then forward slash help for more information so first things first we can select our theme so i'll just go ahead and maybe do something like i'll do this one adam one so let's go ahead and do help okay so now we can actually see all the basics and the commands here so basics add context use at to specify files for context right shell mode so execute shell commands so a few commands help docs clear theme to change themes change the auth method editor so set external editor preference stats so check session stats mcp memory so manage memory list tools uh, about bug chat manage chat history quit and then compress okay so i'm gonna go ahead and start by taking a look at the tools here I don't know why it's glitching like that. 
So available Gemini CLI tools. We got read folder, read files, search text, find files, edit, write, file, web fetch, read many files, shell, save memory, and Google search. Now just to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of how Claude code looks right when you install it, first things first is they get you to pick the theme. We always go with dark theme. And then you can either log in through your Claude account or use the Anthropic API. So like I said, if you want to save some money, it makes sense to actually log in through your account. Once you log in, you can click enter. Now, the one thing I forgot to mention with Claude code is that you do need either a Mac or Linux or you need WSL. Okay, so first things first in Google Gemini here, I'm going to actually make sure that I am using the right auth method. So I'm going to use auth here for slash auth and then log in with Google account. Okay, we're not going to be using the API. Okay, so I'm signing in and then boom, you should see Google Code Assist and Gemini CLI are now authorized to access your account. And now actually for simplicity's sake here, I'm actually just going to use a Gmail account, not my actual uh, executive stride account. Reason being is because if you do use a business account, you may have to specify a Google Cloud project. So you'd have to set a environment variable like so Google Cloud project right here, project ID. So I'm not going to do that right now, but if you do want to use a business account for whatever reason, not that it makes a difference, that's what you would probably have to do. Okay, so here it's showing once the CLI is running, you can start interacting with Gemini yourself. And it's giving two different examples. One, starting a new project in a directory. So like telling it basically, hey, generate me this. Or two, working with an existing project. So let's go ahead and try number one to start off. All right, so here I'm saying generate me a CRM application that allows me to track new leads and conversations in a modern UI, have a task manager and calendar feature in it as well. We're going to go ahead and click on send. So it's constructing a plan right here. So here's the plan. So here's the plan technology stack. We have Next.js. So good choice right there. Next.js is one of my favorites. Um, styling, bootstrap, material design, data storage, uh, core features, dashboard, lead management, conversational tracking, task manager, calendar, development steps, boom, boom, boom. So I will begin now scaffolding the Next.js project. Okay, so it has a command right here. Now it's saying allow execution. So you can either allow once or always allow NPX. I'll just allow once for now. Now it's running that shell command. Okay, now it's running another one for bootstrap. Now it's running another one for all the different packages right here. Slower response times detected, automatically switching from Gemini 2.5 Pro to Gemini 2.5 Flash for faster responses for the remainder of this session. To avoid this, you can either upgrade to standard tier or you can utilize Gemini API key right here. All right, so this, of course, isn't the best. Obviously, it's basically downgrading us to the cheaper, worse model. But I mean, at the end of the day, they are giving us a bunch of free usage. And I know that everyone's probably using it right now. So I can kind of understand why they have to do this. But still, it is what it is. Okay, so now it is saying that everything is set up and good to go. So we just have to run this command here. So I'm going to run this to launch the dev server, PNP run dev. And we can just go allow this. All right, so now it's running PNP install and then it should run PNP dev. Okay, so here we have our localhost 3001. And let me just open this up. Okay, so if we take a look at this, we can see that it is a basic CRM. Welcome to the basic CRM. We have our leads here, so we can add new leads, status, and then conversations here. So pretty basic. I'm going to tell it to improve this. I'm saying make this a way nicer UI, way more modern with way better features. And we're going to go ahead and click send. Okay, so I'm getting a build error now. Let me go ahead and paste this into here. One annoying thing is it takes a minute to paste this in. Okay, so I actually stopped it um, because I'm going to tell it to do one thing. But one thing to note is it shows pa agent powering down, goodbye. And then it shows the amount of tokens we use, input, output, thought tokens. So we use over a million tokens already. Um, and that is quite a bit. So that's just one thing to note. Also, another thing to note is you can either run it with the NPX and then the URL the GitHub command, or you can run it with PMP install uh, dash G Google Gemini to install it globally. 
the one thing i noticed it did with this next.js project is it made it a pages um project instead of an app router so i'm actually telling it to fix that right now it's an annoying thing you know that these models are trained on a lot of older um updates so this tends to happen a lot when you're using next.js shad cn whatever the case is so you this is i'm not going to fully blame it on you know google gemini cli this is something that best practices you should really specify with your prompting beforehand okay so it did a bunch of things and as you can see now if we look at our project it is using app router which is good okay so i finally got it to look somewhat decent it took me uh quite a long time um but that is partially because we started out in you know not the best way um basically w one thing you know my suggestion as always i've mentioned it many times on this channel your initial prompts and how you set up the project especially if you're starting from scratch is very crucial with anything whether you're using cursor whether you're using windsurf whatever the case may be so since we didn't do it the proper way we had to switch over we it had to switch to tailwind there was a few different things so it took a little bit of time here as you can see it looks pretty good we got just a modern dashboard right here for the crm all right pretty decent ui we got the lead section here conversation section task calendar etc here's our conversations right here here's our basic tasks here's our leads i think you get the point here now another way of course you can use gemini which it mentions here is working within an existing project so if you wanted to test this out you could clone the repo here change directory into it run gemini and then just say give me a summary of all the changes that went in yesterday or give me a summary of this project so i'm going to do that in actually this project i'm just saying give me a summary of what this project is okay and boom this is a crm application built with next.js we have lead management conversational tracking task management calendar view etc and it says this project was recently migrated from an older next.js page router to the modern app router now you can also use the gemini tools of course so just to show you in a basic example which you wouldn't of course use in a real life scenario i'm going to say search what the weather tomorrow in toronto will be around 6 p.m and we can see here that it's using a google search to search the web for the weather now we see the weather in toronto at 6 p.m is expected to feel like 31 degrees celsius with a 10 percent chance of precipitation all right, so all in all guys i think this is a pretty big w for google of course it definitely is not perfect i don't know if i would say it is on the same level as cloud code it's really hard to say i will be doing more videos in comparison with some of these cli tools i'll also leave a link in the description down below to this twitter thread right here where they basically did a cli battle royale with these coding agents and you can see they use cloud code anon code codex open code amp code and gemini so these are some cool tools as well that i'll definitely be doing some videos on in the future such as open code here so make sure to stay tuned to see some of those videos but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below guys about google gemini cli i think it's a big w for them and they're really trying to burn the ground of all the different competitors by doing this kind of free model where you know they're giving you access to hundreds of dollars worth of usage per day and this is something that of course a company like google can actually do because they're such a huge company with a lot of money and they just had a huge w with google vo3 and they're really coming strong and the ai races of course with all these different companies claude open ai is really starting to heat up guys so i will be doing a lot more videos more frequently on this channel again so make sure to subscribe like the video and comment down below what your thoughts are about all this are other than that guys if you're new here check out some of the links down below to my community check out our website if you want help with ai implementing ai into your business ai voice whatever the case is just check out the links down below other than that guys i will see you in the next video keep hustling keep grinding and of course guys accelerate your stride take care